Hey everyone, Nathan Nerdark here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Today we're going to be talking about a Mage Forge, some ethereal weapons. Before we get into that, I wanted to talk about the newsletter. Uh, right down in the description below, you'll find a link. Check out the newsletter. It's all the gaming nerdy <coughs> stuff, Nerdarchy, as well as ways of gaming with us and chances to game with us. Uh, and uh, Dave put some other cool player tips in there that I actually read and check out myself. So it's a it's a good uh, good bit of stuff. So with me I have Nerdarchist Dave and I'm Nerdarchist Ted. All right. So we talked about in another episode of Nerdarchy, we talked about the BFFs, uh, Face Spider and Hobgoblin. Right. So we you know we want to build on that a little bit, and we had talked about them basically using equipment that where anything that was made of metal instead of being metal was this ethereal this material they they use from the ethereal plane and they actually use the uh, face spider silk to kind of like bind it together and give a form so i was thinking the 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 name ethereal silk and it would totally not make sense to those people who weren't aware of it because they would think oh well it's silk so therefore it should be you know flexible and but, it's some cloth or something you know and it's some cloth as opposed to an actual you know steel steel um, so, so it, first off, the appearance is it's kind of translucent and has that wispy, ghosty, ghosty look to it. Yeah, and it has like the linear spider silk going through it, almost like a ritilated, like a cage, right? Yeah. I, well, I mean, in my mind, yeah. I picture it like a, a, a spider web cage mm -hmm. around the whatever the general form is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we we said in the video that like it would have the property of needing to. Like go back to the ethereal plane every so often. Yeah, or so, or it would lose, you know, lose its magic, much like a, um, much like the drow uh, underdark weapon, right? right? Or the the puifui, or however you want to pronounce those things. Yes. <laughs> so th what? now we have to figure out what does it actually do. Oh yeah, yeah. Like so, like um, you know, one of the things Fifth Edition is kind of lacking is, uh, and as of right now, is um, special materials. Special materials. So we want to, you know, we want we want to kind of bring some of that into it, where it's like it's not really a magic item per se, but it's still cooler than standard gear. Right. So we, we've got, you know, for the time being, unless you guys can come up with a, uh, you know, better concept name, ether silk. Um, you know, so what what would we say the properties of a weapon, you know, created out of ether silk? I'd say it counts as magic. Okay. For striking. Well, then then it's a magic item. Like, if we're talking about we want to make it... Because there's tons of magic items that don't get pluses or anything, but they yeah. they just count as magic. Okay. Well, uh, that, that definitely ups the property its... of it. Would it be really light? Or, may, well, like it would be really light. Maybe, you know, maybe it's considered magic, but only against creatures that are insubstantial. Oh, Ghosts, okay. Ghosts, uh, So, wraiths, something that you would see... Factors use the spell see ethereal to see mm. yes or are from that, that area. if you have okay. the ability to see into the ethereal plane could you strike an ethereal creature from the prime i would say so yeah, yeah. i could say it exists and it can exist it always exists in the ethereal plane as well so that that in and of itself is superb like, so when the hobgoblin army shows up in the ethereal plane, there's just all these pointy implements <laughs> dangling around. I'm like, oh, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that it basically, it gives them the ability to just strike into the ethereal plane. And that's why they, and maybe that's why they're able to strike those insubstanti insubstantial monsters that require magic to be hit. But they're the only, you know, so, but it's it's very specific. So it's kind conditional. Of, kind of niche. monsters yeah, are strike. Right. Okay. Um, um, you know, I would think like armor and shields made out of it would be. You know, hey, maybe they're almost weightless. Ooh. So, uh, you know, maybe they don't think give disadvantage on stealth checks. Yeah, that's that's pretty uh, pretty good stuff. Um, but I would make that like the only property, because even that is that is still pretty good. Because there's there's magic items that kind of do that. Right. Yeah. So if you made plate equivalent of plate armor out of this, then you would not give disadvantage on stealth. Correct. Correct. Yeah, because it's that's pretty a really much, cool it's, property. It's about weightless. So it can strike ethereal beings. The weapons can strike ethereal beings, and the armor does not grant disadvantage. Okay. And it's light. And it's light. Are we yeah. talking like 50% light, or are we talking like... I would think it's almost weightless. So lighter than that. Yeah. So, so putting weight, on some heavy be, clothing. Weight would be negligible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
It's kind of what I'm thinking anyway. It might even be too good. I don't know. But, you know, it's something to play with. It's, it's well, an idea to hammer Well, still hit regular out. magic creatures, so I'd consider it not too good. Well, <laughs> so, so, not good enough. So, you know, the, the, the only question is, like, you know, it, it's going to be rare because it's it's created by the, this combination of, you know, hobgoblins and phase uh, spiders. spiders. And it has the requirement of having to go back to the ethereal plane every so often. So if you don't have a character who can do that, it's not going to be all that worthwhile. Or, or maybe you could have some kind of alchemic, alchemical like uh, essence of ether or something like that that you'd have to coat it in, like a like like oiling a, a sword or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but so. that almost sounds just as hard to get as the actual thing itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, but so you could at least talking? like pay some cash to get to to continue. Having all right. So item. so really, what this is is this is like the drow magic items. This is a way to use magic items against your players, but don't let them have them. Yeah. So are we talking once a week, once a month? Mm, I think once a week is is okay. Yeah, we'll go once a week. We'll make them slightly. We'll make it slightly easier than than the drow. What, what is the What is the drow? Is that a day? Every day? Yeah, they every, okay. I think every day. Um. So. But down the dark is also easier to get to than the other right. the other plane. So so we say <laughs> it. So it has to spend an hour, an hour a week needs to be in the ethereal plane, yes. or or it begins it, to it, fade. It. it it just, Fast. It, yeah, it, it fades. Like, it just poof. <laughs> it's a lot like, you ever play, remember playing that game, Ghosts and Goblins? <laughs> you know, one minute you're fighting in your armor, and the next minute you're fighting in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, for you guys out there, I'm probably dating myself a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. That's all right. Well, we, we've, we've talked that about... That game was so freaking hard. <laughs> <laughs> we've yeah. talked about our, our gaming history, so people have a rough idea if they've been with us for a while, how old we are. So, so uh, is there any type of tier to this? Like, that's the general hobby well, goblin. Yeah, I think that's, gear. like, the general, but then, like, from there you can go on up. And we're I mean, we were even talking about, like, you know... You know, making uh, a magic items out of it. Now, I would think of like the actual magic item crafted from this doesn't have to go back to the other plane. Like its form is set. It, it is yeah. what it is. Like you know, because we're, we're talking about well, like the, the Hog Island General's glaive that maybe he strikes with that thing. You got to make a death save when he gets a critical, or maybe it's an auto an auto fail on your death save. And like, uh, so so we talked about it a little bit. But what if it, so it's a magic weapon? Maybe it has pluses. And if he hits on a crit, you get a death save automatically, or you automatically fail a death save that you can't get back until you've rested eight hours. Until you finish a long rest. Yeah. yeah. So if you rack up three of them, somehow he crits you three times. He crits you three times. You're Before dead. you take a nap. Dude, the, the Hobgoblin General that is a freaking champion, the max that level, <laughs> would be a nightmare. <laughs> Oh, because they're what? That 18. would be an 18 plus? Yeah. Or even that what, this weapon with that property for an assassin? Hmm. I mean, you, but you know, you only really get to use it once per combat in that ability, but still, you know, that's, you're, you're two away. That's a guaranteed crit. Yeah. Well, you, they, yeah, well, let's say they, they're down. Well, I mean, you like, you, you shoot them, or I mean, you attack them. They get that death save, and then. You only have to knock them down and then kick them a few times and they're done. So well, it's yeah, like, just so makes it more. It makes it yes, it's more devastating if you go down in that combat. You could already have death saves failed. Yeah, if you roll a one, you're done right there. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, first yeah, first death save you roll one, boom. So it's like you know you know this is like the like their version of the 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 Vorpal weapon. So maybe it's like a plus two or plus three weapon, mm -hmm. and then if they get a crit on it, you automatically get a death save until you can rest for eight hours now it might never come into play because you might book it out of there and take right. a nap and then you'll be fine but so I was I, I think was thinking, it's kind of intimidating to know that like something for the rest of the day, to you you're that much closer to death yeah so I was thinking you know uh, since it's bringing you closer to death um, I was thinking maybe he, he called the glaive the ethereal haunt what do you think about something okay. with ghosts or uh, the pale, or something. Mm. It's just an idea. I don't know. And those are really jumping out at me for yeah. this one, though. I must say, though. I think we could have the, the people commenting well, <laughs> figure some things out for us. What do you guys think? What do you? How do? You, how do we want to name this glaive? 
glaive of the grave. <laughs> the gl- oh yeah, the grave glaive. <laughs> you have to order from the beast. <laughs> now, since this armor is not weighing anything as much at all, do the face spiders have it? Because we didn't talk about it in the actual thing. But is there heavy oh. heavy cavalry? <laughs> Were they wearing barding? Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. We can't go backwards now. That was a whole other video ago. Well, face spider barding made out of this ethereal silk. I think is pretty cool. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Let us know. You got any cool names for the grave blade or the grave glaive blade? Uh, let us know in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Nerdarchy. You can also check out nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. Right, so we you know we want to build on that a little bit, and we had talked about them basically using equipment that where anything that was made of metal instead of being metal was this ethereal this material they they used from the ethereal plane, and they actually used the uh, face spider silk to kind of like bind it together and give it form. So I was thinking the 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 name ethereal silk. Right, almost like a related... Like a cage, right? Yeah. I, well, I mean, in my mind, yeah. I picture it like a, a, a spiderweb cage mm-hmm. around the whatever the general form is. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we said in the video that like it would have the property of needing to like go back to the ethereal plane every so often. Yeah, or, so, or it would lo- you know, lose its magic much like a... Um, Hey everyone, Nathan Nerdark here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Today we're going to be talking about a mage forge, some ethereal weapons. Before we get into that, I wanted to talk about the newsletter. Uh, right down in the description below, you'll find a link. You can check out the newsletter. It's all the gaming nerdy stuff, <coughs> Nerdarchy, as well as ways of gaming with us and chances to game with us. Uh, and uh, Dave put some other cool player tips in there that I actually read and check out myself. So it's a it's a good uh, good bit of stuff. So with me I have. Nerdarchist Dave. And I'm Nerdarchist Ted. All right, so we talked about, in another episode of Nerdarchy, we oh. talked about the BFFs, uh, Face Spider and Hobgoblin. And it would totally not make sense to those people who weren't aware of it, because they would think, oh, well, it's silk, so therefore it should be, you know, flexible. And but, it's some cloth or something. You know, and it's some cloth as opposed to an actual, you know, steel. steel. Um, so, so it, first off, the appearance is it's kind of translucent, and has that wispy, ghosty, ghosty look to it. Yeah, and it has like the linear spider silk going through.